This is a diagram of a general animal cell found in the human body. It represents a generic human cell, not a specialized cell type like a muscle cell or a bone cell. Animal cells are eukaryotic cells, which means they are more complex cells that contain a true membrane-bound nucleus and a wide variety of cellular organelles. The word organelle means little organ. They're microscopic counterparts to the large organs that make up the human body, such as the brain, lungs, kidneys, and liver which carry out all the major life functions that the cell needs to survive. We'll learn more about the specialized shapes and functions of the organelles in a future video. The organelles are described as being membrane-bound, which means they are surrounded or enclosed by one or two membranes. Every eukaryotic cell has three parts, the plasma membrane, the cytoplasm, and the nucleus. Our focus in this video is on the plasma membrane, which is also known as the cell membrane. It surrounds the entire cell, maintaining cell shape, giving the cell support, and regulating transport into and out of the cell. The cytoplasm is the semi-fluid substance that contains all of the cell organelles and dissolved molecules. The nucleus, often located in the center of a cell, stores the cell's DNA, which is organized in chromosomes and genes. Genes are specific segments of DNA located on the chromosomes. Let's look more closely at the plasma membrane, its chemical composition, and the roles that it plays in cell survival. Here's an overview of a section of a typical plasma membrane. It's made up of a lipid bilayer, which consists of two layers of phospholipids. Bi means two. We'll review phospholipid structure in a little bit. The outermost and innermost parts of a cell membrane's bilayer are made up of polar heads, which are hydrophilic and are attracted to water found in the fluid environment both outside and inside the cell. Remember that water is a polar molecule, having both positive and negative charges. The outer layer of phospholipid heads is attracted to the extracellular fluid outside of the cell, such as the tissue fluid or the blood plasma. The inner layer of heads is attracted to the cytosol, the intracellular fluid, the more aqueous portion of the cell cytoplasm that contains all of the dissolved solutes, gases, wastes, etc. In the middle of the bilayer, there's a concentration of nonpolar fatty acid tails that are not attracted to any charged substances. The tails are hydrophobic molecules that are repelled away from water and other polar charged substances. The rest of the plasma membrane is made up of a diversity of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. The integral, or transmembrane proteins, cross through both layers of the phospholipid bilayer. The prefix trans means across. They're used for various transport functions in the cell. We say they're integral proteins, which means they're essential built into the membrane, solidly bound within the bilayer. Located on the outer and inner faces of the membrane are various peripheral proteins. Peripheral means on the outer edge. You may have heard the word peripheral when describing your peripheral vision, what you see on the outer edges of your visual field. The peripheral proteins function in marking a cell's unique identity, as well as forming attachment points with other proteins and macromolecules within a cell. Another molecule found in the plasma membrane is cholesterol. Cholesterol is a type of lipid that we've learned is a precursor in the manufacture of the steroid hormones. But here in the cell membrane, it acts as a stabilizer 
to allow the membrane to move more fluidly at different temperature extremes. This is the structure of a typical phospholipid, which makes up over half of a membrane's chemical composition. Like other lipids, phospholipids are nonpolar, but with a big difference. They also have a polar region. Phospholipids have a polar head, where the nitrogen group creates a positive charge, and the phosphate group, with its four electronegative oxygen atoms, creates a negative charge. So we say it's polar. The head has both positive and negative charge. Remember that many lipids contain a three-carbon glycerol building block. One of glycerol's carbon atoms bonds to the phosphate group, but the other two carbons bond to the two fatty acid nonpolar tails. Remember that nonpolar means there is no overall charge. So here we have a unique setup for a lipid. Phospholipids are both polar and nonpolar in the same molecule. We call molecules like phospholipids amphipathic, which means they contain both polar and nonpolar regions. This is like an amphibian, such as a frog, that lives in two worlds, the terrestrial environment on land, but also the aquatic environment in a pond. The polar head is the charged portion of the molecule with both positive and negative charges, which makes it attractive to other polar or charged environments like water, the ECF, and the cytoplasm. The heads are hydrophilic and are attracted to aqueous or water-based environments. Water is polar, the head is polar, like attracts like. The tails are two nonpolar fatty acid chains made up of carbon and hydrogen atoms. They are very hydrocarbon rich, and that creates a nonpolar, non-charged environment. They're hydrophobic and are repelled by water. A phobia is a fear of something. If you're arachnophobic, you're afraid of spiders, so you freak out or run away when you see a spider you're repelled by them. So the fatty acid tails are hydrophobic and move away from water or any other polar molecule. When phospholipids are placed in a cellular environment that is mostly water-based, they're going to arrange themselves spontaneously in a fixed pattern. The polar charged heads on the outer face of the membrane will orient toward the polar environment of the ECF. The heads on the interface will be attracted to the polar intracellular fluid of the cell cytosol. The nonpolar tails are attracted to each other in the opposite direction away from the polar environments. So as a result, a very nonpolar environment is created within the middle of the phospholipid bilayer. This region can create some significant resistance for charged chemicals like ions to move through. That's why a membrane needs a diversity of proteins to allow effective transport into and out of a cell. 